Carnitine is one of the most popular supplements in the world. But just because it's popular doesn't mean that it actually works. In this video, we're going to take a look at the studies done on carnitine and if it is a safe and effective supplement. Before we dive in on the research, let's take a look at the mechanism of carnitine. Now, carnitine is an amino acid made of lysine and methionine. Carnitine's main role is in energy production. Now, the main way our body makes energy is from aerobic respiration, where it takes glucose and turns it into energy. This is a slow process and requires oxygen. So when you're doing cardio or some kind of light workout like that, the body can use glucose for energy. However, when you don't supply enough oxygen or you know you run out of glucose, then the body has to turn to fatty acids for energy, and this is where carnitine comes in. Carnitine transports the chains of fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix, thus allowing the cells to break down fat and get energy from the stored fat reserves. Now, the number one food for carnitine intake is red meat, as it contains around 100 milligrams of carnitine for a four ounce beef. Everything is peanuts compared to red meat. Milk is eight milligrams, chicken is like five milligrams. So red meat is the way to go if you wanna make sure you're getting enough carnitine in your diet. The benefits for carnitine, however, come at much higher doses, a normal dose being around two grams per day. Let's take a look at some studies now and see if it's actually worth the hype. First, we're gonna go ahead and look at carnitine's benefits on athletic performance, and we'll start with this study. L-carnitine plays an essential role in enhancing endurance and recovery from fatigue. In elderly, it reduces fatigue sensation and improves physical and cognitive function, as well as reducing fatigue. In athletes, it facilitates the recovery process and increases blood flow and oxygen supply to muscle tissue. Also, this study showed that L-carnitine significantly increased both maximal oxygen uptake and power output. One more study showing that significant increases in bench pressure lifting volume and also a similar trend for leg press now there's other benefits also worth mentioning for carnitine and that's reduced exercise induced inflammation reduced exercise induced muscle damage lowered exercise induced oxidative stress and decreased muscle soreness so it is clear that carnitine has benefits on muscle building recovery fatigue and reducing soreness and damage pretty good start for a supplement so first we looked at athletic performance, but now let's look at cognitive performance. And the first one is interesting. The results show that acetyl L-carnitine significantly reduced depressive symptoms. Acetyl L-carnitine demonstrated similar effectiveness compared to established antidepressants in reducing depressive symptoms. The incidence of side effects was significantly lower in ALC than in the antidepressant group. Now we all know that antidepressants have lots of side effects and are not that effective. So it's interesting that the results of this meta-analysis are that carnitine can also be as effective as antidepressants and also much safer in terms of side effects. I don't know if it's a legitimate option for someone suffering with depression as a single agent at this time, but in combination, it seems like a good choice to add on to control those symptoms. Now we have one here on Alzheimer's disease, but it's a very small study and it did show some benefit in short-term memory, but again, a small study and also a very small improvement. So we can't really put too much stock into that. And that kind of wraps up our cognitive performance uh, summary on carnitine. Now, next we'll look at fertility and this one is interesting. This study showed that carnitine at doses of around two grams per day resulted in higher sperm motility and pregnancy rate and also lower atypical sperm forms. This is all pretty impressive. It can help your girlfriend, wife, or mistress get pregnant if you were previously struggling. I don't know why you'd wanna get your mistress pregnant, but I'm not judging. So far, we've seen benefits of athletic performance, cognition, and fertility. Pretty versatile supplement, and honestly, we're not even done yet. Let's now look at its benefits on metabolic health, and we'll start with weight loss. This study is a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials where most of the studies included doses of two grams per day of L-carnitine. Duration of the studies was either one month up to a year, so a pretty wide range, but from the graph, we can see carnitine definitely had an effect on weight loss, but the difference is small. It only reduced weight by about 1.33 kilograms, which is about three pounds. Pretty insignificant amount of weight loss in the grand scheme of things. 
especially if we compare it to the weight loss medications like Wagovi, which shows about a 25 kilogram or 50 pounds of weight loss in six months. So not very impressive for carnitine here, but I mean, at least it didn't result in weight gain. Another RCT here showed similar benefits. L-carnitine supplementation provides a modest effect on body weight, BMI, and fat mass, especially among adults with overweight obesity. Again, very small benefit. I wouldn't take this in hopes of slicing off half my body weight, but technically it can help reduce body weight. Now let's look at some other metabolic health parameters. We'll first start with blood pressure, which from this study, it did not show any effect, no change. So we don't really see any improvement with carnitine for blood pressure. However, for blood lipids, we see that these results show that L-carnitine supplementation significantly reduced blood levels of total cholesterol and triglycerides in patients with liver disease, whereas carnitine had no effect on the levels of HDL and LDL. Another study here showed that L-carnitine supplementation was associated with low lowering of C-reactive protein, interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, and MDA, and also superoxide dismutase levels, but did not affect other inflammatory and oxidative stress biomarkers. Another study here showed that carnitine was able to lower fasting plasma glucose by 14.3 milligrams per deciliter, total cholesterol by 7.8 milligrams per deciliter, LDL by 8.8 milligrams per deciliter, ApoB by 7.6 milligrams per deciliter, and apolipoprotein A1 by 6 milligrams per deciliter. So carnitine can also help with metabolic health by influencing weight loss, reducing inflammation, and lowering cholesterol and blood sugar levels. Now again, the differences are pretty small for all those parameters, but still very good to see how powerful of a supplement this is. Now, just as a reminder, the dose used in the majority of the studies was two grams per day, and it is a pretty safe supplement overall where you can potentially run into problems is if you go over that amount of two grams per day. Side effects like diarrhea start to happen at around five grams per day. Also at that high of a dose, trimethylamine and oxide or TMAO is produced. TMAO is linked to an increased risk of atherosclerosis. So it's best to not go above two grams per day to minimize those risks. Overall, it seems that carnitine has lots of benefits, although most of them are pretty minor improvements. It can help with lowering blood lipids, blood sugar, inflammation, muscle strength, muscle recovery, fatigue, infertility, and sperm quality. That's a lot of proven benefits with one supplement. Check out my video on my essential daily supplements right here, and I'll see you all next time.